What's up everybody, it's Charles. Today I'm answering Brian's question about a P0211 fault on his Tiguan. Now I am just getting back from Helen, Georgia for the Alpine Vag Fair car show, which was a great time. So while I read this question, why don't you watch some footage of the drive? Hey Charles, I left my house the other morning and got about a half mile away when the ESP light came on followed by a check engine light. I was able to baby at home and when I made it safe, I scanned the car and found a P0211 throttle position sensor switch B trouble code. I assumed it would be the accelerator pedal and replaced it, cleared the codes, drove it with no issues. On the way back, I gave it some gas on the freeway and it started to accelerate, but almost immediately stopped and the ESP light came on and went into limp mode. Got back, scanned it, wouldn't you know, I had a P0221 and a P0121 switch A fault. Can't seem to find a difference between switch A and switch B. Is this a throttle body sensor? Not sure where to start testing. Any help would be appreciated. Keep the great content coming. By the way, this is a 2009 four motion Tiguan. Thanks, Brian. All right, Brian, great question. Super common issue. By the way, I hope you guys enjoyed that driving footage. What a beautiful place in the country, by the way. So here's a couple of things that can be going on. This is actually, again, a really common thing. I'll go ahead and tell you the issue and what you need to do first. Then we'll talk about a little bit more of the throttle body and the throttle pedal, how they interact and how the ECM reads it. Basically, the first thing you need to do is repin the throttle body. Now, I know you said it was a throttle pedal fault. Why would we repin the throttle body? High resistance or poor contact at that connection can completely disrupt the entire throttle pedal and throttle body system, right? We'll think of these kind of as the system, their own little tiny system. So a poor connection at the throttle body, loose pin, poor pin drag, any kind of corrosion can all cause any number of throttle body or throttle pedal faults. I know it seems weird, but that's just how the system functions. In fact, this system is so weird that it used to be when we had ignition coil recalls, the coils would pop up just a little bit and it would trip a throttle pedal fault. Remember our check engine light and our ESP light, they don't tell us what's wrong with the car. They tell us what system is seeing a failure and that's very important to keep in mind. So what do you need to do to make this right? Well, the first step is going to be repinning the throttle body. There's actually a technical service bulletin on this exact fault or series of faults it's 01-17-05. It applies to pretty much all the CCTA, CBFA engines. I think it even applied to the BPY, which is the belt driven two liter from the generation previously. So you get a new connector, six wires, all new seals, uh, six connector, butt connector dealios, and you just put in a new connector at the throttle body. If this doesn't fix it, uh, I have seen throttle bodies fail, just straight up fail. And I've also seen the harness be an issue. At the dealer, instead of making a big long throttle body to ECM wiring repair uh, or overlay, we would replace the entire harness. And it basically came down to the cost of it. How much time and labor and parts is it gonna take to fix it, right? Do the overlay versus what's the cost of a new engine harness. And the engine harnesses weren't that expensive. And if you do that, do not forget to put the little weather seals in there. Otherwise you run the risk of getting corrosion back up through. Now, as far as the throttle body and throttle pedal, how do they interact with each other? What the de what's the deal? So each of these two components, the throttle body and the pedal have two sensors in them. The throttle body, the sensors kind of act like this. When it's just sitting in a rest position, one reads high and one reads low. And as you press the throttle down, they kind of do this and cross each other. With the throttle all the way depressed, the one that read low with nothing, no action, reads high, and the one that read high reads low. So they counter each other. So they're basically going to be opposite. And the cool thing is if you're looking at these values on a scan tool, let's say, the two values added together typically should equal 100 or 99. If it's 99, I'm not sweating it. If it's 47 that they equal, that's a big time problem. For throttle body and pedal problems, I like to graph my readings. This is super easy in VCDS, which is one of the other reasons I love VCDS. Uh, it's really easy because you can just watch the graphs so of the two things, right? Doing this number here, kind of following each other, but they'll cross, they're opposites. The pedal on the other hand, functions kind of similar, but a little bit different. We have two readings. We have a low reading and kind of a mid range reading. So one is always going to be half of the other one and these follow each other. So as I press the throttle body down, they're both gonna go up, maxing out it, call it 100. So if my high one reads 100, my bottom one, my low one is gonna read 50. So these are not, this is another place where I really like to graph it 
because I can slowly press the throttle down. I can see them both. I can see them both interacting with each other, following that same kind of strike path that, um, that they should, should be following. Sometimes with numbers, that's a little more challenging to see than it is with a graph, which is why with these kind of things, I love, love, love graphing them or using a DSO, whatever, whatever you have at your disposal. I just use VCDS because I'm right there. And then I can see it the same way the ECM sees it. If I see a problem, I might then go DSO, but if it's functioning correctly at the ECM, that means my throttle body should be good and my wiring should be good, at least at the time of testing. Because this may be an intermittent issue, you might not actually see it on those kind of graphs, which is why, thankfully anyway, there's a TSB, so it'll walk you exactly step-by-step -step on how to do this repair. Again, super duper simple. All right, so there you go, Brian. I hope that helps. I know it's kind of confusing why my pedal would have a fault when the throttle body is the issue, but I've seen this tons and tons of times. In fact, before VW mentioned anything about this, got my butt kicked on one or two as well. So guys, with that, I'm out. Have an awesome day, and I will talk to you again next time. And while I was in Helen, my sunroof drain, I think, came apart. So now, yay, I get to go fix uh, about, I don't know, an inch or so of standing water in the passenger floorboard of the R32. But the good thing is you guys are going to get a video out of it.